Hello, everybody. Welcome to 9 one The podcast that St. Helena didn't know it needed. This is Hillary. And this is Chris. And thanks for joining us on 9 one Podcast. Hello, Chris. Hi, Hillary. <laughs> <clears throat> How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Okay. So, today we have Josh Phelps with us of Grounded Wine Company. Mm-hmm. Uh, long time St. Helena. We've known each other for a long time. Yeah, Welcome. that's his intro. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Happy to be here. <laughs> Fed some awesome uh, food from Cook tonight. It was scrumptious. It was great. Always good. We've been harassing Josh for a while now to get him yeah, here. But here. by we, you guys I mean were persistent. me. Very persistent. <laughs> uh, as a disclaimer, remember Hillary um, is really in charge of this podcast. I just show up and help. Uh, just really so I can drink wine. What number are we on? This is 13. Thir- lucky number wow. 13. Mm-hmm. I am always amazed we're still keeping track of them. <laughs> um, but this is fun. And here we are. All right. Um, so tonight we're going to do September 2020, Ooh. which was kind of a big month around here. Not only is it harvest, which is normally mm-hmm. an experience, but it was also our fires round two. Oh my God. Um, and then we also, instead of doing a throwback, we're doing Calistoga, September 2020. So we're bringing in two of the little towns of the valley. Phenomenal. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, before we get started, I did want to thank Josh. Um, during the fires and after the fires, he put together like the coolest um, fire relief um, benefit party, I guess you'd call it, at, uh, with Charter Oak and with like, Karen Laz and... Uh, Dan Petrosky. Dan Petrosky. Thank cool. you guys for being there. Yeah, oh, it was wonderful. It was a blast. That was a night for the books. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really cool. You guys wound up uh, making quite a bit of money for the relief fund, right? Yeah, it was yeah. good. Cool. All right. A lot of martinis, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing about uh, disasters in Napa Valley. At least you got a lot of people to back you up and support you. So anyway, thanks, Josh. That made a big, big difference in the Thank community. Thank you, man. So, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, so what are, we dr- what are we drinking tonight? <clears throat> Before we get um, to the it. Well... I brought two of the wines I make. I brought our 2016 Napa Valley Cabernet called Steady State and our 2018 uh, Pinot Noir from Willamette Valley, Oregon. That we that was our first vintage making that wine, cool. second vintage of the cab. And then I brought a bottle of Brewer Champagne because that's what I felt like drinking. This <laughs> <laughs> we never say no to bubbles. No, absolutely not. I drink a lot of, a lot of champagne. Nice. Champagne and tequila are my kind of go to. Why is, do, are we not best friends? Because yeah. that is literally <laughs> my favorite thing. <laughs> mezcal. Mezcal and tequila. Depends on the mood. Oh, man. I love it. So, how do you feel about 9 Wine? Do you, I mean, obviously, we're really up and coming in the community here. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I haven't looked at the police log for a long time. I'm embarrassed to say I don't get the same in the star. I need you to subscribe tomorrow, mm-hmm. which I will. Okay, yeah. perfect. So they just well, they, they don't sponsor us, so they just it's okay. Out of that. <laughs> We're still looking for sponsors for that one. Currently uh, self funded. <laughs> but and I the have, merch is great. The merch is amazing. So. Oh my God. All right, well, let's see. Well, I'm going to have to try some of that Pinot. We'll start with that. Okay. Ooh, nice um, Should we get into it? Yeah, let's do so, it. So, this could have been you, Chris. Report of a man in boxer briefs yelling in front of a driveway. <laughs> Did it say anything about people coming over? It was at two in the afternoon. Okay. Disregard. Okay. Um, it could have been. Was it on uh, Hunt Avenue? It wasn't. No, oh, okay. Well, what was he doing in Box Bridge stuff? Just yelling. Oh, yelling. In front yeah. of his driveway. Typical. How about this one? Tuesday, September the 1st at 13.04, one in the afternoon. A woman said that her husband and her car haven't come home in several days. He hasn't been answering her calls, and she wants her car back. She didn't want her report him missing. <laughs> she just wanted her car back. Oh. <laughs> Feel the love in that one. Yeah. Thank uh, you, thank you, dispatchers, for capturing the, the essence of that report. I think this is a really sound marriage. And yeah. um, I'm not worried about the affair, just the car. <laughs> exactly. I think she's just kind of accepted. You know, he's gonna do what he's gonna do. Yeah. But I want my convertible. I'm making it a convertible because I'm just making assumptions. <laughs> My turn? Yeah. You just jump in. I'm just now starting right at at the first first page here. Do it. You know, this is like, obviously, it's a little depressing because a lot of this is like fire related. Um, But this guy is a beauty, an evacuated evacuated resident. So he is evacuated, Hmm. but but he saw a glow behind his house on a security camera. 
while it was evacuated, want to make sure it wasn't the fire. <laughs> and what day was this on? On uh, October. That would have only been oh. October 1st, so maybe yeah. that wouldn't have been fire. No, that was definitely fire. Yeah, that would have been fire. No, that would be, yeah, September. Yeah, that would have been fire. Yeah, yeah so definitely. Yeah. So. Thanks, I, friend. Yeah. <laughs> They're just letting you know. Tell us something we don't as know. As you were out there fighting it. Oh, my God. So where were you guys? Let's talk about the yeah, fire for a minute. Yeah, I was going to say. Right? Where, Josh, where were you when this thing kicked off? I was here when... I was gone for the, for the lightning fires, kind of, which was great. But um, I was here very much so for the first fires, or these, these fires, mm-hmm. um, the last fire. I was at my house in St. Helena. I have these, like, massive redwood trees on my property mm-hmm. that are, like, just, dist- like, disturbingly large. Um, <laughs> that when it starts getting windy, it starts getting scary, but it's expensive to take out. Maybe PG need to do that for me. <laughs> They're a little busy If they right were to fall, too. it would probably fall on Dr. Gold's house, and I kind of feel bad for that on that one. <laughs> well, at least you're um, spared. <laughs> but it's, yeah, so the, I, those were, like, ripping in the winds and... Mm. It was crazy, crazy, crazy time. But yeah. I, I was here, and I, I was staying in, in, in Napa because my house was super smoky, but I was back and forth every day checking yeah. on everything. Yeah. Filling the generators. Yep, it was cool. Keeping the wine safe. No, you're out about, man. Just keeping the wine safe, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. priorities. Had my ad pass. And... <laughs> <laughs> Hill, where um, were you? I was, <laughs> I was here, oh. as you know. That's right. Um, yeah. I had gone to a birthday party the night before, and then I woke up to... No, I'm aware. <laughs> because... I think we should take a minute and explain this because that may have sounded a bit incriminating. You're like, I was here. All right. So uh, flashback to Saturday night, Saturday night, September 26th, right? Yeah. I'm sleeping at home. I had to get up really early. We're picking at two in the morning. So like a responsible human being, I went to bed at like 1030. Um, And at midnight, all I hear is bang, bang, bang. Doorbell, doorbell, like people all around my house oh, banging wow. windows. I thought I was being robbed. Chris, I think you're exaggerating a touch. It was three girls, and we were lightly tapping on the oh, there, windows. There was no light tapping. <laughs> lightly tapping, just saying, are you awake? Did, did you want to have a glass of wine with oh, us? Holy smokes. So the lights were like off. Yeah, everything was <laughs> off. Right? So I get up out of bed. I have my gun. I walk in my underwear. I did not with you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. In my boxer brief, <laughs> out to the, the living room, and I'm like, oh, thank God. It's just... Hillary, Lauren, and um, Brooke. Brooke. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, and I, but by the time I caught my breath, and they stopped laughing because I was in my underwear, <laughs> I put the gun up. We came in and we had a glass of wine. And we then decided to try on every one of Chris's army helmets. Mm, holy smokes! That's and we all signed up that night. Yeah. And then by the time I finally got back to bed, we all signed up for the army. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Not I get really a recruiting for your service. <laughs> for future service. I get to bed at midnight. Get we all considered it, though, after wearing all the cool oh, hats. Oh, no, well, you, look, you guys, you may look cool. It may be the new Army recruiting poster. So I went home and went to sleep. You had to get up and pick. Mm-hmm. Um, I was up at, <clears throat> at work at 2 in the morning. Yeah. And at 3.50 in the morning, I heard the dispatch, like, looked away from the tractor and saw the glow by And Jim thought Mark. you might want to respond. And I knew this is, this is going to be a problem. Yeah. It was a problem. And then... Yeah, it went crazy. Yeah, it was totally nuts. I did try to fight it at one point in my tennis skirt. Can we hear about that? <laughs> uh, I was at my dad's house on Pratt Avenue, mm-hmm. and like an ember had flown, caught fire between his house and the neighbor's house. Right. And Tom will <clears throat> listen to this. You need hearing aids. So he couldn't hear what I was screaming, but he could hear that I was screaming something bad. And I was trying to tell him, like, the house is on fire. The house is on fire. I think the neighbor's house is on fire. Your dad needs hearing aids? Yes. Or, oh, okay. Yeah. And um, I had only slept like three hours, and I this is the next night, right. Sunday night. And I'm in out the I don't know why I decided to wear my tennis skirt of uh, <laughs> playing tennis in the smoke. The emergency uniform of choice, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Tennis skirt and Rothy's, Rothy's will <laughs> sponsor us. And um, I don't, my first inkling was like grab a hose, not call 911. Hey, that's good. But I, it wouldn't it. reach. <laughs> no problem. So, but then my car had been parked right next to the fire, oh. and all my valuables that I was evacuating with were in my car. So I backed up. Oops, there was a little light broken in that process. <laughs> but it's okay. The fire, the so fire trucks damage. happened to be coming down the road. Like, thank goodness, and put wow. it out because it was. But but seriously, there was spot fires in the middle of town. I, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. I wanted to like yeah. just like I, I wanted to like be in a situation to put out spot fires. Like I was kind of itching. For you should it. have been there. Yeah, I, know. I failed. I backed I, my car I into a, a tree. Couple of evenings, like my yeah. my friends have a property up behind Sulphur Springs, mm-hmm. and we were like 
hiking in a few nights because it was getting close. Mm-hmm. Met some some uh, characters. Some local flavor. Oh my gosh, man, it's crazy. But, yeah, I, it was it was it was crazy. I mean, you you know. I, mean, just, I will say one thing: the citizens of Saint Helena, I think, saw more fire and <laughs> put out more fire than a lot of yeah. firefighters see in in a slow year. I mean, they were people, I mean, you had the Abrus out with uh, their D8 cutting yeah. line up by, um, by Buffet. You had like, um, Cole, who else? Cole and, Cole and Brooke Valentine yeah. were fighting it. I got, um, I got, I have buddies on Silverado Trail, my buddy's dad, mm-hmm. and he's just, he's right across from Calistoga Ranch. Yeah. Everything around him burned down and he, him Saved and his it. son just stood there yeah. with like pasta pots and whatever they were using to dump water, they like saved it. They like saved it. They put out like a hundred and something spot fires oh on their God. property and their property would have been gone. It's a beautiful house, but it's crazy. All, all, both, all around it is just like, wow. Torched. So. As like a firefighter though, where's that fine line of like, they're helping and oh then they're God. like a, a problem. A nuisance, yeah. 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 No, I think this fire, everyone that could, was able-bodied, we were like, we didn't kick anybody out. Like you here? Can you can you yeah. squirt but water now? Like, like, do it, you know. Yeah. You just did. There was no people. I just didn't have anyone else. Like the here. manpower. So it was like, yeah, go for it. And we, I don't, we didn't kick a single person out of their house unless they were. There was a couple of people we didn't have to move, but they were you know elderly or old. You had to they would have been more of a get, risk. Get, get out of here, you know. But um, but yeah, if someone can like literally walk and squirt a, a hose, they were, they were hired. Well. <laughs> You're Did you give him a quarter set? Because that's all I want to know. <laughs> no. But the skirts are on order. <laughs> Perfect. Let me. Oh, no next. You know, it's very agile. I could definitely run back and forth with no problems. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, let's see. How about this? A uh, report of someone screaming, cursing, and picking a fight on Edward Street. That's fun. Uh. Um, how about in Calistoga on Ooh. September 8th? At 8, 10 in the morning, officers report, responded for a hazard on Cedar Street. Wow. What do we think the hazard was? A it doesn't hazard. say. It just says a hazard. In St. Helena on October uh, 2nd, mm. um, a resident received a robotic sounding call claiming to be from law enforcement. Police assured the resident that real police don't send robocalls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you haven't gotten that one. It says your social security number has been traced to illegal activity. <laughs> yeah. The police are outside your door. Very uh, convincing. Oof. Um, this there was a lot of rattlesnakes in mine. Hmm. That's um, like weird stuff here. Yeah, there's there's. I feel like with natural disaster brings mm-hmm. in different. Yeah, there's some. There's a lot of people. looting looting situations. Mm-hmm. And just like wildlife doesn't know what to do, mm-hmm. and people get a little anxious and crazy, and they don't know what to do. It's very sad. Uh, but uh, there was a friendly yellow lab acting lost on War- Voorhees. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Circle. The police checked the area. Wonderful. Hopefully he found his way. Or she. Um, which would be better said than uh, 1013 on Monday the 7th. The medical aid for a woman briefly passing out on Spring Street. I'm glad it was only brief. Briefly. Again on October 2nd, we've got, uh, in the evening, we've got, I can't read military time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, police responded to a disturbance on Charter Oak Avenue with a man threatening someone with a metal pipe. <laughs> police arrested a 57-year-old St. Helena man. On suspicion of threats with intent to terrorize. It's like all I want to think about is who this was, and I'm sure <laughs> know, we thought like hard about we could figure it out. It's like our, our Wait, one of our parents' that? age, kind of. Charter Oak. Charter Oak. Who could it be? I don't know. He apparently he needed a Charter Oak burger. He was probably just hangry. He was a little hungry. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So speaking of food, what would you pair with the uh, landform here, Josh? I mean, what do you eat? What do you Charter Oak burger, right? Charter Oak. I was going to say it actually sounds pretty good. I would I would pair. I mean, I I don't try to overthink that stuff. Yeah, like, what all do you my lines are pretty universal. Mm-hmm. It's good, right? I'm really it's good. It's great. Awesome, yeah. man. I love it. And this was the 2018 was the first year you guys yeah, did yeah. From, some landform. So what was the um, first of all? Actually, if I can get to the whole grounded wine company, how'd you come up with the name and all that? Um, or this wine or the grounded wine company? The ground, the grounded wine company was like you know it's really hard to. Um, that's an interesting process of, of just any business, I think, but I, I work closely with, um, with Nero and Felicia, as you know, mm-hmm. Felicia Carello, I grew up with, um, on kind of all things brand branding for our company. And we came up with grounded, um, really the, the idea of like grounded in soil, like grounded mm-hmm. in Napa Valley. Right. I think there's just a lot of like meaning and, and, um, 
it means something to us, I think. So cool. that's that's where that name comes from. And then all the wines have different names and um, they all kind of have their own individual meanings. Landform is, I mean, honestly, from the, from the primary vineyard that we make this wine from, you can like really see the landform of, of um, Mount Hood and cool. um, we kind of put it on the cork. Mm-hmm. But um, I just thought it was, it kind of fitted that region and it's Willamette well, Valley, super, super special region, so. Awesome. No, I love the label. It's just simple, but it stands out. Um, Really cool. And Felicia does all the labeling. Yeah, and she, we, we do all yeah. that together, which is really fun. Great. Did you always know you wanted to come back and do wine? Was that kind of like just growing up here, being around it? Did, I, did you know that was like your plan? Growing up, I, like, I don't know, but um, partway through college, for sure, I kind of got into it. And then for my senior project, it, I was going to school in Chico. And I started, a, I built a wine brand for my senior project. And that was Taken, which was my first brand. And then I sold my equity in that three years ago to start this. Cool. Right yeah, so how did the whole, if we can go way back, the whole Taken brand, right? So we started that with yeah, Carl, Carl and Trincaro, yeah. And right, we were partners with um, his family, with the Trincaro family, up until, for what, not for the first couple of years, but we partnered with them, and then, um, which was an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. And, uh, nice. and you guys yeah. built that to a lot of cases, right? I mean, what was the final, when you sold it, what was the final uh, that's case? That's a good question. Um, probably all in with the company brands, yeah. it was maybe close to 50,000. Yeah. It's a lot. We're 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 getting, we're we're climbing back up with at about probably about I don't know this coming year I'd hope that we're approaching about forty. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And where do you where do you make it all? <clears throat> we make the wines in all the regions we that we make wine in. So um, we've got production facilities that that we don't have production facilities, but we operate out of production facilities on the central coast in San Luis Obispo, here in Napa. Um, and then also in Oregon and Washington. Cool. So we operate out of four facilities. Everything is produced and bottled in their respective facilities, and we ship here as case goods. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, it's fun. That's great. And then you have one from Washington as well. We, have, we, make, we make collusion. Collusion, that's right. We make yeah. two collusion wines. We make a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Merlot-based blend. Cool. Um, the label on that's really cool. Black and gold, kind of. Yeah, that's a, it's a fun label. We're actually changing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't that fun. Uh, never mind. Yeah, it, was, but it had its fun. Changing it slightly, but um, but yeah, no, it's it's been it's been fun. And then our focus now is really the California stuff. So we, we're making cool. like California brought appellated um, Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet to start. But we have mm-hmm. some other stuff in the pipeline, and um, those are like fifteen dollars retail, thirteen to fifteen dollars retail. Nice. Those are doing really well, and so that's um, kind of a focus. And we've got a. Some fun stuff happening. Awesome. What's the landform retail at? 25. Nice. Oh, that's Good. great. Yeah, that's yeah. so like marketing to more of our own RA. Yeah, m- most of our stuff's like we, we're trying to be like in that 15 zone, but we mm-hmm. have some stuff in the 20. Exclusion is 20, this is 25, and then our Napa cab gets up to 50 just because it's Napa cab. It has to be. Where do you um, get the grapes from? Uh, State State? Predominantly from a vineyard that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're very close to and uh, are close with as far as um, our business, and that's in Oak Knoll yep. in uh, Napa. And then we've kind of just sporadically bought grapes that we've been able to get our hands on these last few years of just when, when friends kind of offer us something that, that fits into what we're trying to do. So this particular vintage, um, we had grapes from Oakville, Rutherford, and St. Helena um, as well. Everything's Valley Four. So. You just represent the whole Napa Valley. I love it. We just represent the whole <laughs> But that, that brand's really, right now, the Oak Knoll Vineyard's kind of the core of it, but um, we'll, we'll kind of figure out where that's going to go as we, sure. as we grow and evolve. All right. Well, I'm giving it a shot. You're All right, right dude. <laughs> well. Man, there's a lot of these, like, fire ones, which are, like, kind of depressing. It, it's very, have you guys, well, you obviously it gets like not, a, Chris. Right, he's like, report of a man refusing to leave Main Street property, a Main Street property, and trying to break a lock on a shed with a two-by-four. <laughs> Seven thirteen in the evening Whoa. on October fifth. Do you think he was uh, like trying to loot? Did anyone have any problems with looters? Oh, no, that was on I... September twenty third. Ooh, hadn't even started yet. Hadn't even started yet. Ooh. Yeah. So. Um, no, but there were reported of three people drinking beer near a dumpster on Main Street. They were asked to leave and refused. They so refused to leave. They refused. There's is this during the fire or is it pre fire? This is pre fire. Okay, I was going to say if it's post fire, like no. they refuse to leave. <laughs> Their dumpster spot that is prime property yeah, on yeah. Main Street. That's pretty good. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
And that was it. That was it. The cops just said, okay. Like, <laughs> like you just know. Up. They didn't no, end up in the same a drunk tank. <laughs> I, the next morning, though, there was report of an injured squirrel on Main oh, Street. Oh, shit. It's always. <laughs> Who do we call? But, well, is it dead or is it alive? It's alive. Dr. Gold. Control. Yeah. <laughs> right. we, we need to get Dr. Gold because we reference him. him. We're going to do a often. special. An it's animal special, and I will be animal in special at heaven. Home Ranch. I will be in at, heaven. At Farmstead. Well, duh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Oh my god, how about this? Uh, Friday, September 4th at 4.40 in the afternoon. A dark gray female cat with black stripes. Kind of sounds like a skunk. Uh, <laughs> was reported missing from Wallace Court. She might be wearing an orange collar with a bell. Or, or maybe not. Maybe she didn't decide to put it on that day. <laughs> but here, you guys ready for the news? The cat returned home on Monday. Is this story. in the middle of fires? It's uh, in the middle of the what first fires. What yes. a blessing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, there was um, officers responded to a domestic disturbance on Washington Street in Calistoga. Parties contacted. A juvenile did not want to do his schoolwork. <laughs> I gotta get it. Speaking of schoolwork, Josh, did you ever have um, Mr. Hoppy in school? Of course. And At least for like a couple of years. It was yeah. either I can't remember. Or, it was either McCormick yeah. or Hoppy. Yeah, it's great. Oh, goodness. Of course, I love it. I love Tom. talking about this. Tom, he, you know, he listens to every episode, and he He's gives the, us he, a grade. He, the best. he gives it a, a, a grade. Everyone loved your dad in high school. He's well, the best. I mean, yeah. that's I, I really like him, but you yeah. know, my vote's kind of partial. So <laughs> well, that's a good thing you don't. You do like him. <laughs> I know. If, if you didn't, there'd be a problem. That, that I'd have a lot of issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's phenomenal. You know, Tom's last year uh, is this it's year. This year. Oh, really? So we're gonna have him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what, what are your best uh, any good stories from high school? I mean, it's, have you been in the police log have yourself? Have you been in, it in high school? Or just in general? I have been in the police log. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share? Is, is, is it? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm trying. Well, I mean, there's. Well, I've been in the police log a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so like, how we, we'll start now and then we'll go back to high school. I mean. Like, like, <laughs> how many are like, there? Like, so I, I bought my house three years ago. So up until then, like, let's say four years ago, from college until then, um, Sebastian Heil and I were housemates, right? <laughs> and we had two different rentals. And we were like, I mean, good guys. With, I mean, we had, but we had, you know, friends come over. We had barbecues and stuff. As um, you do. We had, we, we had a couple neighbor situations with people that just were easily agitated. <laughs> and we had a lot of police log activity. Um, during, during that time, <laughs> but it was like complete bullshit. It was just like, did it ever? We, 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 we had an angry neighbor that like sure. would call the cops like when he heard voices, you know. So I mean, we were at the police lot all the time. Um, high school, yeah, there was like some there were some moments for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You'll only like, get this. There, there was like yeah, there was there was some couple moments. There was there was like a running from the cops through the vineyard. Uh, no, I, I, it was there was. Some some kind of activity that was happening at the elementary school playground <laughs> area, one evening, and the cops came in on motorcycles. Wow! Wow! And uh, I mean, yeah, the cops came on motorcycles, and everyone got like busted. But I ran, and I like literally went through the west side of Santa Lena with like hopping fences, <laughs> like just <laughs> complete road style. <laughs> And I went, you know, like where Mr. Anderson lives. Yeah. You know that lot next door with the trees. Like, yes. Yeah. I was like hiding in that in a in that lot. And you got away. I <laughs> got away, but then I went back to my house, my parents' house, thinking like it was all good, and um, the cops. Showed up at my <laughs> <house>. <laughs> That's one thing insane. The cops are alone. Alone. <laughs> it was now. a classic, but you know, looking back, you're like whatever. That's you know? harmless. Like, looking yeah. back, they're like so nice too, like, like. You know, like it was like harmless. He's like, you know, we, don't do they it bring again. you home. Yeah, don't do it again. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. But at that age, you're like, I'm gonna run. <laughs> well, you're um, speaking of your dad. So he also works with you a little bit with Grounded, and then has his own brand, uh, Ad Vivium. I'm assuming. Ad Vivium. Yeah. Ad Vivium. Sorry. Ad Vivium. Yeah. He, he that, one of the many things he does. But yeah, he works with me on all these wines now. Cool. We're taking more and more of his time as we grow. Mm-hmm. Um, because. He's not really the director of winemaking, but he, he I mean, that's kind of my role, but I, mm-hmm. I lean on him for a lot of like the, um, like high level stuff. Yeah. Like he does all blending. Nice. Uh, or who does with me, but he participates in all blending, all sourcing mm-hmm. and all protocols to all our facilities and to all our, you know, other winemakers that are kind of working with us. So cool. 
And he's been doing this for a few summers. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he worked, let's see, Petrus, right? That's one of the ones I know. Yeah, Petrus. Camus. Camus. He's now up with England. Yeah. Um, cool. and so he's new. Yeah. No, so it's really helpful. Yeah, it's definitely an asset to what, what we cool. do, for sure. Yeah, I see him all the time in England. He wasn't happy when the cops came to the house. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, here's, here's one. Um, Report of suspicious man in a van on St. Vendel Lane. The caller was concerned because she'd seen a helicopter in the area earlier and thought the driver might be hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was just me. <laughs> Nothing to do with the driver. Yeah. <laughs> to clarify, me and the helicopter, not the van. <laughs> Yeah, like Thank you for kind of putting that two and two together. <laughs> that was September 26th, so I guess that's pre, pre-fire. Yeah, just uh, before. Just was, before. The night of yeah. Hillary and Friends' party. And yeah, so maybe to... the helicopter was like even sensing the first fire. No, no that was in the morning. Tell you, they should have been out there. Um, how about this? So, going down the dark path even more, oh. uh, 1049, September the 6th, a caller asked about an accident that happened Saturday night on Ellers Lane. The caller owns an Ellers Lane home, and the tenants found blood on their porch and door this morning. They were referred to the sheriff's office. It was a murder. <laughs> Could have been. If it was a murder like the 1888 murder that we read about, they certainly didn't read. They didn't write it up like as they eloquently. Used to. Yeah, it was definitely a murder. It's mm. definitely going to be on one of those crime this podcasts. Is, I this is also the same Saturday, Saturday, September 26th. Report of a neighbor harassing a gardener on Stockton Street. Mm. I don't think I would ever call the cops, but I feel like you know my I, my my name my uh, not my direct neighbors. I love all my direct neighbors, but there are people somewhere on the street that have <laughs> harassed my gardener because he was using a gas blower. And he got an electric one, but I encouraged the gas one because I like the fact that like people complained about it. So I I encouraged the use of the gas blower on my street. It's like a capital crime. The leaf, okay, I, but it it's like kind of like a it's kind of like a vintage like heritage thing. Like yeah. it's kind of cool. Yeah. Like I and I have the smell. Like it's like cool. It's like the gas blower. Like sure. use the gas blower. And I have a I have like a Dewalt electric one. Dude, that thing's Doesn't weak. Work. Weak. No. It has extended all the way to Calistoga. Let's hear because it. they respond to another complaint of someone using a leaf blower. Oh lord. At it's four fifty in the and afternoon. These big redwoods, you can't. You gotta. You need the gas power blower yeah, to yeah. get those big old sticks blown out <laughs> the sidewalk. You know. Okay, so this is mid fire. At... Wait, can I? Hold on. No, I, go I got for it. on Jump the in. same topic of noise. Complaints. And then we move on. No, noise please complaints. do. This is also Calistoga, September fourteenth, four o'clock in the afternoon. An officer responded for a rooster on Foothill Boulevard. Officer, after some investigating, this is curious, found the rooster and the owner. <laughs> It was in violation of Calistoga Municipal Code 6.06.020. They have a code for this. Which prohibits roosters within the city limits. Here's the kicker. Rooster will be gone by the morning. Do you think he ate it or gave it away? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Follow up on it. I hope it wasn't Calistoga. dinner. I would have taken it in. Take him. See, I have Move, Move him to Rutherford. There's no ordinance if you have a, a rooster and you want to come to Rutherford. We'll, we'll, we'll take you. It's really kind of you. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, you're fine. Um, I have to find what I was going to tell you. Uh, Oh, officers responded for theft of water from a fire hydrant. (laughs) How would you even do that? How would you do that? (laughs) I can give you the tools for it. It's really not that hard. I keep one in my truck. But Okay, not all of us are that savvy. You know, I keep like hand sanitizer and wipes and emesis bags in my car. Emesis bags, very important. They make great trash cans. (laughs) How would you even break in? Do they need the water for the fire, though? Hey, if you do, you gotta do. You gotta do. I um, hijacked. Well, maybe hijacked is too harsh of a word, but I um, commandeered like ten vehicles during all these fires. I had a jeep at one point. I had multiple four wheelers. I stole. I mean, did, did you for the purpose of fighting the fire? Yeah, oh, of course. But they, they had the keys during, during the during the fire. Yeah, like we would take the okay. There's a four wheeler. We gotta see what's going on at that next ridge. Like take it, drive it. It was amazing. Yeah, and in fact, the folks at Green and Red, you guys know, you know Green and Red. I know, yeah, yeah. On, uh, I would think no one would really have a problem. With no, that. they in fact gave us a um, a Mahindra. You ever seen a Mahindra Jeep? No. It's like an Indian made Jeep, coolest thing I've ever seen. Sad. And we used that Jeep up and down the fire line, like moving Seriously? clothes and people. Oh, it was amazing. Do you have any like yeah. fire stories? Oh, I have like, so many fire stories. I know, but anything yeah. you can talk about here with us. What like, do you want to hear about? Yeah, it's so exciting. Your top. I mean, this three. is the fire episode. Yeah, top three. Fire episode. Top so, three. Uh, we were at Green and Red for a while. That was a close shave. 
Um, Barry Cox's house. That was also very exciting out in the uh, Charles, Charles oh, wow. Valley. Yeah, it was, was that okay? Ooh, it made it, but barely. Holy smokes! Like the fire was raging up to it. And you like fire with that tank or what? <laughs> Let's just say it got within about five feet. It was actually licking the sides of oh, Barry's man, that's barn. Crazy. And if you know Barry, you know why that's interesting. <laughs> I thought we'd seen that property before. Oh, it's such a, it's a cool place. Uh, really, the whole Child, Child's Valley as well. We were we just got really lucky, I think. Um, so that would be top probably two or three, and then uh, Deer Park, man, Deer Park. Oh. The night of uh, the twenty seventh was just that Sunday night horrendous. horrendous. Dude, I, I went up there the other day. It, did we, they I, just I, make I you like, want to cry? Drive through like Crestmont, yeah, and smoked like, crazy, yeah. Yeah. crazy. Yeah, you know, I said about the Hennessy fire. I said, well, this one is. We were winning, like at least in our small area in Rutherford, Charles Valley. We were winning. We were saving houses. But the, yeah, yeah. But the uh, the hen of the uh, glass fire was just not that way. Even... No, it was just we were running from it. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah. You know, it's really crappy when you're like leaving your friend's house. It's like, well, oh, it's probably gonna burn. You know? Yeah, but there's nothing you can do. No, no. I mean, there was 60, 70 foot flame lengths. Just it turned as it went up by by Burgess, mm -hmm. and then the winds shifted right down Deer Park Road, and it just blasted down Deer Park Road, and then onto Meadowood, and um, you know, all the way down to the well, into <laughs> Hillary's dad's house. Yeah. You know? I know. That was crazy yeah. when it came on to, like, Pratt. That's, wow. that's when yeah. it just I mean, got... It was, like, like, so many moments. Like, when it came to yeah. Pratt, like, it was coming down Spring Mountain. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like, Wallace Brown. Sulf White Sulphur Springs. Yeah. Like, above Sylvaner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I live, like, in the middle. Like, I... It would have been hard for the fire to get to my house. Just it would have been hard to get to this house. But mm -hmm. you're always kind of like, shit, man. But, the wind's really picked up. And yeah. it started ripping, like... There's only so much you could do, right? Yeah. That was the and first time, the and... like, living downtown that I was like, this may actually not go in my favor. Yeah. Like, the, I may actually, like... Hey, Hillary was awesome. She called me. She's like, dude, do you want me to get anything for your house? Like, it's not there yet, but, like, do you want me? I was like, thank you, Hill. I already had my yeah. list of things I was going to come in to say for you. There's four bottles of Scarecrow in that morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, good eye. See, I was I like, the military helmet, the quarter zip... The, the coffee table. How am I going to fit that I know, in the I car? Know wine. <laughs> the, the, the nine on wine uh, hats. So knowing wine, what's your what's your like go to Napa? Is okay, go to and reach. What do you mean reach? reach? Reach like you. It's either like, like not budget or Tuesday like you wine. can't get it all the time. But like something that like if you could choose to drink it, okay. like on a special occasion, Just you Napa would. Or no. anywhere. Anywhere. Um, I mean, I. Oh man, there's like a, there's so many. Reach like I would take like Petrus or Le Pen like on a nightly basis if I could have it. But um, actual go-to wine, I drink a lot of like Grover Champagne. That's sort of, I, I buy it through my winery license, so it's like as a reach wholesaler, and I can get it for under forty dollars. And um, I, you know, that's I drink a lot of that like Chablis, mm -hmm. um, and I love Bordeaux and I love. Burgundy, but I mean, I also drink a lot of Napa because I live here, so I mean, I yeah. drink a lot of like friends' wines. I love like Smith Madrone is like a go to wine mm -hmm. for me because I, you know, get it from Sam at a good price, and yes. I think those wines are fantastic. Or he seems to leave my house all the time. How was their um, Him place? And his brother like fought the fire. I remember seeing that on Instagram. I remember Tom. seeing pictures of Tom shirtless fighting the fire. Next level situation. <laughs> dude, they, they saved those them. fire. They saved them. Those <laughs> pictures were like <laughs> they were great. I was like, dude, you were an animal. Right now. <laughs> Who else? Um, Tony Lardini out there in shorts saving saving the Bell Mill. Did you see that? No, that I cool. missed that. Yeah, Tony. I think he's out there. Um, who else? Sherwin's. Mateo, Sherwin's. Yeah, God. Well, they the. But they saved, they saved house, the house, so that's good. Um, but my God, man! I mean, it literally, it was everyone for themselves at some point. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the fire department was out doing had everyone possible, but there's just not enough manpower. Many fires, and I mean, for it to jump from one edge of the valley to the other is unbelievable, phenomenal. I mean, that fire behavior. We never thought that would happen. And then everyone left. We were up in Deer Park. Everyone like obviously went to Spring Mountain. We stayed up there. And then the hospital catches on fire. You know, it was just like yeah. Weird. And the hospital is. I mean, even when this will release, it's still not open, and it right. won't be open till the end of mm -hmm. November. Wow. So what do you do without a job? Are you uh, going to be okay on your? Well, on considering your that's just my, money? my side hustle, <laughs> I, I have another full time job. Okay. I think. I mean, besides this podcast, it's really lucrative. Okay, so still looking for sponsors, by the way. For <laughs> Beer was reported stolen, stolen from a refrigerator in someone's garage on Chablis Circle. 
Like really, Gosh. like your kids stole. Like I would love to know who that was. Like your kids stole the beer and you called the cops, <laughs> or like some, you know, your kids' friends. Or I mean, you've probably never stolen beer from anyone's fridge no. in Saint Lena, right? I, I don't know. I haven't. Yeah, maybe you don't have it. <laughs> Probably like the, it's probably like the woman, it's like the wife's like calling the cops and her husband's like a drunk, you know? Well, she wants the car back. Yeah, so. she, she's like, I want the car back. Now I'm going to call about the beer. He took the beer. In the car. <laughs> and this is the guy, 1953, on the, September the 3rd, reported of a suspicious man acting distraught near Main Street with a knife strapped to his side. Police issued oh, a citation. That's, that's dark. He was angry but at his what wife. what was the citation for? Like, can you not walk around with a knife? Is that like an open carry thing? That's or a good a, question. It was the same guy who had the... Uh, machete? Machete. No, it wasn't a machete. It was a, uh, a Japanese... Oh, yes. Uh, samurai know. sword. A lot yeah. of losers. Yeah. Um, police were asked to be on the lookout at 7 in the morning for a man who said he'd be a, been attacked and was heading to the hospital in Napa. So my question is, did he leave St. Helena Hospital and was like going to the next one? Could be. Or did he just... Did the person that attacked him then felt guilty and called and was like... Be on the lookout. This guy's not doing great. Kyle Stoke is all just responding for welfare checks. Well, <laughs> more mature, mature aged people in Kyle Stoke. There's lots of need for welfare checks. Is that mid fire? <laughs> it's uh, just like everything. <laughs> this is fun. Sub two. Yeah, you know, it's like pre fire. Kyle Stoke, September twenty second, eight fifteen in the morning. Officers responded for a verbal argument with a possible paintball gun on Mora <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> Officers contacted several residents. And no problem was found, but that's a hell of a way. Wait, wait, wait what was that? Paintball gun? Uh, paintball gun on Mora Avenue. So someone was having a verbal argument, oh, shooting a paintball gun. I've, I've got another Mora Avenue situation Ooh, wow. on, this on is September 26th. The Hunt Avenue of California. September 26th. First, at, uh, at these times, whatever, in the evening, <laughs> officers responded for a social gathering on Mora Avenue. It was mm-hmm. a social gathering. So someone called because they should can't have social gatherings. And then 30 minutes later, they came back. Because people were not wearing masks. <laughs> so they came to the gathering, they're like, okay, you're fine. This and then is- they, they came back to this gathering. And- Does anybody miss social gatherings? Yes. A different gathering, sorry. So but Two social gathering calls. One, people were not wearing masks, and that was a thing. During so. the fire, though, <laughs> not that COVID went away. I'm very aware it's real. Oh, it it's on. But you kind of forgot like oh, yeah, you were in this fire, pandemic. Yeah, like, yeah. it wasn't a priority. No, yeah. care. No, well, you had to wear a mask because you couldn't breathe yeah. outside. Sure. But like otherwise, it was like people were congregating together it was because they're evacuated. I was, in, I was staying in Napa for most of the time, like not because I was evacuated. I was almost evacuated, but my house was just um, like it's a hundred and seven year old house, and it was just like a smoke filled room. Yeah, yeah. And so I stuck it out for like two days, and I was like, you know, screw this. And I went down to Napa and like went out to dinner every night, and like everyone was just like out in Napa, like they, partying. Yeah. Like it was like going to Cadet. Like it was like <laughs> totally not COVID. Like everyone yeah. was just like. Giving hugs. They're like, oh, it's great to see everybody. Like, and, glad you're okay. Glad you're okay. How's your house? And we made it. Well, and too, I felt like a Napa proper, like, because they weren't in that immediate threat and they couldn't really see it like mm-hmm. us. Like, it was kind of, I remember going like Target and I was like, nothing was wrong. It was but I was like, it's a little smoky. <laughs> well, um, yeah. And I'm telling you, one thing I miss is bocce. Yeah, I know. Right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, in fact, I got to rep the uh, sand crabs. Oh, nice. Wow. Sure yeah, I've never even, I, I bought those, on, and I never even had. I don't have them. They're all in Nepsi's truck. I need it. I need Dude, it. They're amazing. Cows. So, I need to get one. Uh, Josh and I are on the Sand Crabs, uh, the Sand Crabs together, which is the, the best bocce team. Yeah, it is um, the best bocce team. And uh, you had these awesome shirts made, so thank you. Felicia Carello. Yeah, designed design design the logo there. Yeah, killed it. I mean, ooh. Killed it, yeah. Um, Sand Crabs. Really cool. So, yeah, a fun team. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get our chance at the trophy this year, but uh, I'm sure next year we'll be Next close. year, we're going to crack down. Yeah. Gonna, well, just you know. wait. I, rumor do has it, it? we it? move to oh. off Sunday. To Thursday? To Wednesday or Thursday. That's Thursday. all rumor. I don't know if this is confirmed Thursday yet. is the best. Thursday is Well, I don't have any control over this. I just you, show up with Thursday's fake a, goods. Thursday is a good day. It's a great day. Well, yeah. the Niagara Balls are coming for you. <laughs> the Niagara Balls, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> the names of these are just, they're amazing. Amazing. How long have you been on the sand crabs there, Josh? I was the same time as you. Yeah, we both, okay, we, we pledged together. I had, a, I can't remember our team Can you name, talk about used, that I used, to, I used to play on Sunday mm-hmm. with like a bunch of San Leon friends when we got out of college. And we, we, that, we, we really let loose. It, it was like, that was, yeah. was big, big nights. And um, <laughs> I was the captain. I was a total tyrant. I was like so competitive that I would like pull people out of the game. And then like, I got like fired from being captain almost because 
it like upset people because like Josh was here to have fun. <laughs> I'd be like, I was just like only there for the win. <laughs> Sand crabs is like better because I'm not I'm not in charge and I'm just yeah. like there for fun. Being not in charge of all this is great. Just show yeah. up and no, it's super fun. It's a good team. Well, I, I'll we're, let we're you pretty, know when we end up. We have up. some good people on our. We have some good players on our yeah. team. Yeah, I mean, we got Chris Hall. We got um, well, the Dempseys. Yeah, we got uh, the Cutlers. Cutlers, yeah. Who else is on that team? Benelli's. Yeah, yeah. It's a fun group. Fun group. I I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a good group. A lot of like good people that work in the wine business that like have access to good. Carrie Laz. Carrie Laz. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of good wine. A lot of good champagne and wine. Yeah, you know, we get a lot. Isn't of Isn't that stuff. the whole point of botching? Yeah, it is. <laughs> So we've, we've majorly missed it. It is a bummer that we don't have that this year. That, yeah. that Do you think it'll fun. be back next year? We We're, could socially distance bocce. Oh, totally. It's There's outside. only like four I think people on back. the court. I think it'll be back. I hope so. I think it'll be back. We, we got it. We hope. We'll see. We'll find out. Mm-hmm. Um, well, people are still trying to get their workout and fun in. But iPhone and Fitbit were found in Crane Park. Oh, all right. Speaking, maybe, well, couldn't have been Bashi. So. Okay, but. An iPhone and what? A Fitbit. Oh, a Fitbit. Do you think that they were actually. I've been listening to way too many murder podcasts to fall asleep. <laughs> Do you think they ditched the phone and the Fitbit because of location services on it and they were actually abducted? Possibly. Possibly. You know, it that's could a, be. a uh, strong possibility. <laughs> or it could have been the uh, the guy that had the beer stolen and didn't have his car brought back. <laughs> he might have not wanted to know where he was. <laughs> his stuff, you know? Babe, I'm at Crane Park working out. <laughs> yeah. In fact, what he did, Check I Check my location. Yeah, and he strapped his Fitbit to this dark gray female cat yeah. with black stripes. 70, 72 hours later. <laughs> She's like, why are you down at the river doing jumping jacks? Um, a father received a phone call from a man claiming to have his daughter. The man said he picked her up in a van and she was crying and getting crazy. The man said he was a pedophile and demanded money to release the daughter. I should not be laughing. This is really bad. He told the father not to tell the police. He had the daughter's name. The father was able to contact his daughter. He made sure she was okay and confirmed the call was a scam. Police told him to report the incident to the sheriff's office and block the phone number. Whoa. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's that is the most that's sense. level. That's like the top story of the Ever. September police law. I think if someone the, called the my dad I know. If someone called my dad that was like we abducted her, he'd be like, You're returning her soon. Like I'll just hold out. No need to call the police. Or maybe he'll be like she'll annoy you enough. She's gonna talk to you for hours. Like you'll want to drop her off. That's what Trust I mean. Me. Like okay. they'll they'll return they're gonna return her. Like we're Don't. we're not worried. It's fine. She's probably crying and upset. That sounds like her. She's having a moment, but oh it'll all be okay. That's amazing. But yeah, that was um, that would be very scary though. Yeah, it's like like taken. Yeah, well, Saint Helena like edition. Taken wine company. Take, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that was taken the movie out after you named Taken Wine Company, or was it like about the same? Like was, right the same. Was yeah. that your inspiration? No. <laughs> She's like, All the like, names were taken. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wait the, the, how'd you go up and take it? No, saying all the names were taken. <laughs> I know it's so stupid. I can't believe I ever tried anything. That's perfect. Um, but yeah, it was like the same time the movie came out. I remember that distinctively. I was. Did you ever say I have a lot of skills, particular set of skills? Yeah. I can make wine and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on a happy note, report of a German Shepherd and Pitbull running loose on White Sulphur Springs Road. They're friends. It sounds like the beginning of a dog movie, Homeward Bound. But Saint Helena edition. Yeah. What could be more perfect? Yeah. A thirteen-year-old did run away from home for two hours with a friend. Yeah. Isn't that what you're supposed to do in Saint A thirteen. Police were asked to, asked to check on a family of four who were asking for money at Adams and Railroad. Like everyone's seen that. I've like, seen that. Well, kind of, really, these kind of nomads that that come. Kind of they were definitely classic there. Saint Helena people, like calling the police. <laughs> There's bankers in Saint <laughs> What are we gonna do about what we, it? What are we gonna do here? We we used to have the one that made the log frequently. She used to hang out on a bench. I think she like I think her name was Yolanda. They did think, a story on her. Yeah, she was like wanted to be homeless. I think they ended yeah. up. I think someone. I think like she ended up getting put up in a house. 
It probably I people mean, like, would Santa buy her Lina, coffee. Santa Lina, yeah. like put her up. She got a house. Yeah, yeah. The place to be homeless. So definitely. I remember yeah, she when ended up with a house out of it. I was, just yeah. moved home and she would yell sometimes. Yeah. And I was like she, walking late one night. I think my mom and I were going to the movies or something, and yeah. I just hear this like yelling. And she's like, "Oh, it's just Yolanda." Like, don't <laughs> yeah, worry. I was like, "Oh, oh yo, welcome home." Just yell. <laughs> yo. Man, dude, this smells great, man. So, yeah, what's your um, the yeah? Cat. Tell us about the steady state. The Cow. Um, well, it's from the Four Valley Floor Vineyards. Yep. Oh, we test. talked about this. Um, but, I mean, it's like seventy percent cab, cool. um, and then it has it has all five Bordeaux varietals in it. Um, so it goes like Cab, Merlot, Petit Bordeaux, Cab Franc, Malbec in that order. Cool. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's like mellow. Try not to be overly tannic. It's pretty classic in style, like classic Napa. I don't really want to be like overly modern. Mm-hmm. Um, no. Not chasing the uh, the latest fad. That's good. Yeah. Actually, trying. I think things are coming back to a little more. Normal. Yeah. What do you I think, think this is like mid. I don't think this is like like a, is, we're not trying to be like old world. Right. Um, but we're just not trying to be like juiced up, like mm-hmm. you know, rocket juice. Yeah, it's like the kind of cat we grew up on. You know. Sure. It was like just kind of like middle of the road. I mean, um, yeah, I think that's coming back for sure. Yeah. I do appreciate that we can all say that the cab we grew up on. Yeah. Because yeah. we really literally grew we up. Really grew up like <laughs> yeah. <a new> cab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is for fifty dollars a bottle, right? Yeah, cool. Phenomenal win. Um, I mean, I wish it could be less, but it's just hard. It's hard because you're committing to fruit contracts that are anywhere between yep, it's five grand and seventy five hundred dollars a ton, and it's it's not. So, Todd, let's talk about smoke for a little bit, man. What, what's your thoughts on two thousand eighteen or two thousand twenty smoke? I think that it's it's a case by case thing, mm-hmm. and I think that I mean it pissed me off when like you get. Like the news coverage is like there's winemakers that came out like wrote off the vineyard, you know, and they're just like, dude. It's, yeah. It's just disrespectful to like everybody else in the business because mm-hmm. um, we don't know. We we really don't. I mean, we're so new at it. But um, I think that everyone was affected differently. We mm-hmm. um, did not make much wine in Napa this harvest um, as a as a result of um, tame results that we mm-hmm. received from the vineyards that we were working with. And then we made no wine in Oregon. Oregon was actually a bit worse. Yeah. So it was for the most part. We were seeing higher numbers, but I think Napa. I talked to plenty of people that mm-hmm. did not make wine because the numbers were bad. I talked to plenty of people that didn't make wine and they didn't know. Mm-hmm. And then I talked to plenty of people that made wine and they're not sure how it's going to turn out, but it's their state fruit and they're like, we're going to make wine anyways. Mm-hmm. And then I talked to plenty of people that made wine that aren't having problems. So I think there's the whole spectrum. Just, a huge if, bell curve to this. Huge bell curve. It's like where your vineyard yeah. was. Like there's so many factors that like mm-hmm. we don't even know, right? Yeah. And um, I think there's going to be just like 17 – this was definitely a more dramatic year with the two fires, but there's going to be good wine. I mean, there's always going to be good yeah. wines that come out of that. So you think it'll be this a harder... Been, Go ahead. This would have been an epic harvest without the fires. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. all... Like, this would have been, like, the all-time. That's great. We would have made, like, just sick wines. Mm-hmm. So, so do you think it's going to be more challenging from a winemaking perspective or a marketing perspective for 2020? I mean, both. I yeah. mean, here's my opinion about the marketing perspective. It's like, you know, everyone, like gets that in their head but in two years or three years from now when people aren't going to remember cab, most people aren't going to remember unless yeah. yeah the people that are going to buy the, the scarecrows or the mm-hmm. the really expensive stuff there, there, there's a le- there's a level of sophistication with that buyer that like might remember mm-hmm. and unfortunately the critics don't always help us with that yeah. um but most people or the influencers most people are not going to remember the influencers <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the influencers know what smoke tanner is. Uh, I would love to talk about They probably that. like it. They're, they're like, oh, this is like those whiskey barrel aged wines we buy. Um, but no, I think that like most people, and I'm not saying you should like make wine that's tainted, but I just think most people are not going to remember. So if your wine's good, and if, if you succeeded as a winemaker, and you have good wine from 2020, by the time we're ready to sell it, the majority, I mean like, you're selling wine in stores and stuff. People, yeah. people aren't like. I mean, yeah. They think of people that don't live here. No, like, like in that so, moment, not, they all reach out and, and like, are you it's okay? like they have to like put out wine that's like blatantly tainted, but like yeah. most of it's a lot of it's not. Yeah. I mean, there will be tainted wine for sure, but like most producers won't release it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not. We're not like a bunch of idiots. There's not. If you look at 2017, I haven't personally tasted a bunch of tainted 2017. I think I've tasted like one. Yeah. And, and do you, what does it taste like? Do you actually taste the smoke? Sometimes you can. It tastes like kind of burnt, but like kind of just, yeah. I've heard like, ashtray. Like ashtray, yeah. yeah. But I think that uh, for the most part, most 17s have had it are great. And if you look at what the critics are saying, they're, they're saying, hmm. 
it's quite not quite as good as 16, but that's just as a vintage. Mm -hmm. But the, the receiving good, good marks, and I, I don't, yeah. I think well, I think that, most of it was picked also. As an industry, we need to be like respectful of like everyone and, and like work together on this stuff and like mm -hmm. not just like we can't. People, Napa's so trigger happy to talk to the media. You get out of Paso Robles, I make wine down there too. It's like a good old boys club. That that there's fires down there too, but you don't didn't see, hear about it. Didn't hear about it. Yeah, that's smart. Man. <laughs> you know, like they were able to. No, now, now we're talking about it, but uh, <laughs> but no, well, like, with, you, our, with, our huge, yeah, with our with our huge following. But here. I mean, that's like true, and I just think that like it, it gets talked like yeah, the second there's a fire here, you got like so and so down the street from me posting a picture that's like this sensationalized thing of Meadowood burning down, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Pray for us, it's by our house." Yeah. And it's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> so you're like in the middle of saying, like, your house is not going to burn down. Like, calm down and just, like, go back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oh. People, that's one thing with social media, man. It kills just, me. It kills just, me. The, second, like, the second there's, like, smoke, you get these people, like, freaking out on social media to, like, the whole world. And that is, we got all these Napa winery people. You, everyone is friends with all the critics. And the, so immediately, like, yeah. the media and the trade and everyone... Gets spun up. It gets spun. Yeah. Then everyone thinks Napa's burning down. Sure. And it's like we we have it's a problem. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I find it annoying. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's an adventure. It's an adventure. Uh, we but do need a break at some point. We, 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 have, and fire. we absolutely need a break yeah. from the fires. I mean, it's, we can't do another year. Yeah. No, no, this is a one off. I don't think this will be. Everyone's really worried. This about This is it. just your professional opinion. Uh, it's not very professional, but <laughs> <laughs> I have an opinion. <laughs> Man. Well, gonna, but in like the opposite flip, I know we kind of touched mm. on this, but seeing the community come together, yeah. like even still you're yeah. seeing people donating clothes and donating mm -hmm. furniture and do, like, yeah, the, the, I mean, that definitely was brings so good, good out of people. Yeah. Also, for example, the, the fundraiser that you helped uh, usher in that Charter Oak, like how did that come to be? Honestly, like, I mean, it just felt like a natural thing. I, I literally, like, I think I, I right when Meadowood burned um chris martina costa were at my house um just like catching up over a glass of wine or something and uh they were they left like the next day to evacuate and i called them when they were driving i'm like hey let's do like a you know i can't remember my, what the idea was at first but i said i think it was just about like first responders but i said let's just like plan a barbecue and like get something and get something on the books and so you know it, the idea was kind of like kind of thank first responders, raise money for a fund, and then um, we kind of added a raffle thing. Yeah. I think that was Carrie Laz's idea. And that was great, because that the raffle, everyone bought like hundreds of dollars of raffle tickets. Awesome. So that was that was great. And that was just like raffling off some magnums. Um, so it, it worked out. Um, you just have to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, that's it, was also, like, it was also just like a nice thing to do to like get people together. I mean, people were like, well, people need Everyone that emotional up. connection. Like, people needed to show up. Like, mm -hmm. people just wanted to be there. And, well, like, they people want to help, and sometimes they yeah, don't know they how. They also just want to, like, see each other and, like, yes. hang out and, like, have fun and let mm -hmm. loose. And, like, because every, everyone had been through this that's, like, like, everything horrific that, thing. That, that's kind of what I thought was so cool about that party was that you kind of got both. You're, like, doing something good, but it also gave the community an opportunity just to, like, get out and, like... Mm -hmm. Well, I think between COVID and the yeah. fires, it was like everyone, it's like psychologically, it's just yeah. there. I mean, they're struggling yeah. because you, you can't be around people. And then it's like, well, all my friends, all this, you know, yeah. it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. And then we finally had a moment to come together and be like, okay, I can have a few glasses of wine and finally relax yeah, and yeah. like eat and this incredible food. And, yeah, yeah. And catch up with people you haven't seen because of a pandemic yeah. and then the fires on top of it. Yeah. Well, Chris did a great job with the food because that was awesome. Yeah, that was like, that's his idea of barbecue then. Like, it was supposed to be like, <laughs> when at first he's like, I'll do some burgers and ribs or something and then I like, looked at the menu I'm like, yeah. we said, What was it? Like 10 different items yeah, or like something? Crazy. It was delicious. <laughs> yeah. <Incredible. laughs> anyway, solid job on that. And with the... Funds all went through Meta Invictus. Was that the? Yeah, the, it was, I think most for the most part, which is a fund that they, that organization had set up, like cool. the Harlan family had set up, that nice. goes to um, fire relief. Very cool. I mean, not to keep like harping on the fires, but it's cool to see how everyone's going to rebuild. How everyone yeah. feels so resilient. And this is the fire like, episode. Harp. You know? I, I know. But, um, no, so here's the question: Do you think? Yeah, well, it, it doesn't feel like we snap back. It's weird, like how yeah. numb everyone is to these fires. Though. Yes. This time it felt like. Like right after the fires, like after that party, it felt like we snapped back, right? Yeah. In a weird way. Like I'm like, we shouldn't have just snapped back. Like 
everyone's been through it before. Or something, but like everyone's been through it. Like it just felt like, and even though like all these winery, of course, if your winery burned or your house burned, you know, like you're personally dealing with a little more. Mm-hmm. But it just felt like you stopped hearing about it. Yeah. Well, and people are resilient. And they just want to like start yeah. moving forward and um, like just recover. Well, communities like Deer Park kind of worry me because I, I wonder if they will really rebuild like they were. I don't know. I, don't I, guess, know. I mean, I was struggling. I, I, like, I, I struggle rebuilding on Hillside right yeah. now. Totally. I, I mean, I just, I can't, mm-hmm. my heart just goes out to all these people that lost their house yeah. and then say you work at Meadowood, say you work at Calistoga Ranch and now you've lost your job. Mm-hmm. There was some family like, where I just, the husband worked at Meadowood, the wife worked at Calistoga Ranch and they lost their house in Deer Park. I, oh I can't God. even fathom it was like the worst what you would do. Ever seen. And they rented the house. They didn't have insurance. It was just a shitty situation, oh, you know? Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, the entire Calistoga Ranch is gone. No, yeah. 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 I mean, matter what's closed, so yeah. you know, no one's working. It's really I, sad. Yeah, it's bad. But I, I think overall we'll bounce back. Of course. Yeah. I think yeah. we'll be resilient enough, and I think... We will. We just need to, like, we just need to, like, get control of the situation because it just, we can't, I don't know what the answer mm-hmm. is, but we can't, it can't keep happening. Like, yeah. yeah. We just can't. Like it, you know. Um, I don't know if, if you know if this one burns so much that that's going to help prevent future fire, or uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, problem, it's a problem because, like, back in the day, I mean, it's hard to like manage for us when there's houses all over them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, and no one wants to burn. So it's like the hillside, like Deer Park. It's like you can't really control burning when there's. Houses. Okay, everyone, go burn your front yard. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna do the backyard on Wednesday. Yeah. Side yard to yeah. Thursday. Okay, I think we just found our forestry coordinator, Hillary. Yeah. I think it, this has been my calling that I didn't know I had. You know, I went from medical to podcaster to now forester. Okay, we're gonna light it with fusees over here, and then everyone take your big lighters. And everyone over have here. their sparklers to make it fun. You gotta, you gotta love this Sunday, October fourth. So that's like full fire, right? Yep. <laughs> Report of a possible drunk driver swerving and dropping a cigarette out of the window on Main Street like oh, a fucking idiot. Like, what? Oh, please tell me they got him. Oh my god. Yeah, good. Good, 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 good job, dude. <laughs> Solid. Zero fucks given. Oh, um, oh, well, speaking of drunk driving, report of a man stumbling near Main Street, then driving off in a truck. Let's keep in mind this is 4.41 in the afternoon. <laughs> Police arrested an 81-year-old St. Helena man on suspicion of a DUI. <laughs> wow. If I'm drinking at 81, then, I mean, that's... Maybe don't drive. Maybe I won't drive. But, but still... But stumble them. You stumble was, up and down Main Street. You make friends. Be happy. Be real happy. Uh, yeah. Like stumble all the way down to my office. Because, you know, I'll be young and still be, be working. <laughs> Basically, you're going to be the An officer fed someone's pet on the Jonah Avenue. Well, maybe they were evacuated. Oh, yeah, that's why. Like, why is it even a lot? You can call the police department for lots of things. Yeah. We have learned that in this podcast. Yeah, that they you. are amazing at what they'll, what they'll put up with. So, what are the plans for Grounded as we keep on going? Oh, you know, before that, what... So, you guys just did a recent reorganization, right? We did. How that... What, what's the plan? Um, it it's great. We just uh, are... We, we, when I started the company, I, I had Vintage Wine Estates as a sales and marketing arm. Um, they're a larger conglomerate right. in the wine business. And um, I just bought them out uh, to build our own sales and marketing arm. So we are, we have a the start of the sales organization, which is super exciting. Nice. And uh, yeah, we're, we're growing. We've got seven wines. Um, the, the, the real drivers are in the $15 price point. Mm-hmm. We've got a, a really fun can product coming out. Ooh. In uh, February, which is a um, you get a sneak peek on the name, or uh, is that it, all? It's I, I can't even, I can't I can't tell you anything Secret. about it yet. Okay. Um, it's, it's affiliated with our Space Age brand. Cool, which is our rosé brand. But that's that's gonna be cool. So we're um on. not to interrupt, but can we talk about Frosé? Oh, Whoa. did you try the Frosé at Charter Oak? Have I tried the Frosé at Charter Oak? So good. I mean, in fact, I saw a gaggle of, of ladies walking from Taylor's over to. If you ever want to have a frosé party, that machine's mine, so I can G- transport it. Um. Okay. We were just talking the other day, so I'm turning thirty this year. We'll bring bring the frosé machine. And I was already planning on having a frosé machine. So will you? you use it, yeah. Will you please attend and bring I, it with you? Absolutely. We're well, happy to use it. It's the sickest. It's like the so it's this machine is called Spaceman. That's oh, the brand. Wow. I needed it because Space Age. 
But it's like the same. It's what they use at like Goss for like it's it's the best. It's the coolest machine. I'm so uh, excited. Literally, literally and figuratively, coolest yeah. machine. I, it's gonna this. Yeah. Just so it, and it cranks a lot of rope. You can like make a lot of frosé in it. I mean, I I've never have... used it myself. I had it delivered to Charter Oak. They've used it, and then I was gonna like. I don't have that many friends. Thing. June, we've got some time. <laughs> well, it'll be at Charter Oak at that time, so we'll have to bring it from Charter Oak for the party. That's well, okay. We will. It's fine. Martina and Christopher can come because yeah, I adore we'll, them. We'll bring the we'll bring the machine and. So literally, you just unscrew, you just dump the, the space age in it. How does this work? Yeah, you dump. No, you you, you mix everything yeah. in like a bucket and you dump it all in. Okay. And then it, it just freezes. It like freezes it. No, no ice. It like freezes it. It's crazy. Wow. But you dump the space. So you dump. You dump the. It's I don't know what they put in a charter rope. It's like wine. There's a little bit of some kind of liqueur. Uh, and then there's it's like delicious. passion fruit, like Meyer lemon. There's all this stuff. Well, and it's not too sweet. No, it's good. And it's so refreshing. And you guys cool. throw it with a bendy straw, and I'm sold. Oh, I've like, yeah, I've like, I crushed like a lot of those this summer. <laughs> That's amazing. So, of like, all of your brands, what's your favorite? Uh, your favorite one? It's like asking about your favorite kid. Oh, that's, uh, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I'm really passionate about the, the the Grounded by Josh Phelps brand, which is the $15 price point, just because yeah. I, I see the potential with it. Um, I like my favorite to make is probably the Land Form up in Willamette Valley. I just love making Pinot Noir. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, as far as a brand goes, I really like Space Age. I, I it's like the coolest them. label, by the way. Like Did Space Felicia do that one too? Yeah. God bless um, you. You are really passionate about these I, labels. They're cool. I like it. It takes a lot of work. Well, you see how we transition it to, to a can format. Mm-hmm. I think it's, um, oh. it's just super fun. Like it's just a cool, um, it's a cool brand. Yeah. That brand has. I will buy those for my party special. too. Wait till you see it. Wait, wait, and those are this really is, reasonable. I'll, I'll show you when we're off. The, I'll, sh- I'll give you a sneak preview when we're not talking about it. But um, <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a cool product. It's cool, man. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. But, so uh, in the future then for Grounded, where's where's it going? What's the plan? You you you, you got the whole share now. You're ready to run. Yeah, we're just like, where's it going? We're just yeah. gonna, we want to build a sales team. We want to expand the portfolio. And we want to see what we can do. Right. Any plans for new uh, labels or are you sticking with seven? Right now, we're very much focused on what we have and then we're going to see what works and what doesn't and we'll always, we can always eliminate our ad. Cool. Um, but uh, right now, we need to focus. My, if, my, if I told my sales team I was coming out with another wine right now, they would be, they would think I have a, re- a real problem. But, um, <laughs> That's it, a good problem to have. At some point here, I will do, like, we will make some Chardonnay and there's a few things that I, I want to make that, that we haven't made, so... And if we, we will come out with the Chardonnay project in the next like couple years. Mm-hmm. If we want to buy your wine, where do we find you? Uh, Give us your Instagram tag, sure. Unless everything. unless Hashtag anyone has another blog they want to share. I think we've exhausted it. I think we're good. At groundedwineco.com. Or, sorry, at groundedwineco is Instagram. Um, groundedwineco.com. You can buy wine. Uh, but if you're local, which I think most of you are, just DM me. Um, you can buy our wines at Sunshine Market in cool. Acme in St. Helena. Um, at the Kalaz Wine Collection in Yonville. Pretty much everywhere that sells wine and locally, thankfully. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cool. Really cool. Well, thanks, Josh. This has been fun. I know. Do you um, want to great wine? Say you. where you can find us. Uh, of course, as always, at Nine One Wine Podcast. On Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, and we also have business cards now. Thank you, Hillary, and Wait. swag. So if you want a hat or where can these sponsors track you down? Uh, the sponsors, yes. So if you want a sponsor, uh, you should. You can um, find us on Instagram. You can also yeah. email us at nine one one podcast at gmail dot com. Perfect. Um, we also have a Facebook page, or oh, you can yeah. just probably find just Chris or I lurking on Main Street somewhere. Give her, give her your money. We'll put your name on the podcast. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's gonna be like nine one one by Steve's Hardware. <laughs> Right? So thanks, Steve. We talk about you every time because we're, we're really hoping that it's going to come through for us. We'll trade hats. All right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yay. Thank you. All right. Well, that wraps up another episode of 9 one Wine. And remember, guys, stay out of the police log. And if you can't be good, be careful. Enjoy your evening and be safe.